The following podcast is a next level production. Ah, there she is. Do you mind? I'm just nope. grabbing a bite. I do not mind at all. So, Ashley tells me that you chose Silver King K. King K. Mm-hmm. I have notes. Mm hmm. I mean, I'm a co-captain. It's only fair I have a say in the new recruits, right? No, actually, I choose the new members. But I am pitching the craziest twist. The audience will never see it coming, right? Well, I've made my decision. (laughs) Oh, come on, you haven't even heard it yet. Seriously, you're, you're gonna love it, ready? Hey panelists, welcome back to the show, I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoilerful podcast about The Boys Season 3, Episode 3, entitled Barbary Coast. So Steve, what was the synopsis for this particular episode? So the episode? synopsis, I pulled the synopsis, I think, I like the Amazon one, so I pulled this from Amazon. Uh, tonight at 9, 8 central on Vought Plus, it's the season finale of Hashtag American Hero. Three contestants remain, but only two will join the seven. Will Starlight choose her old flame supersonic, or will someone else be moving into the seven tower? Tune in tonight for the shocking final episode brought to you by Lean Frozen Dinners by I bought where slim tastes super. <laughs> I wanted to do that in my best announcer voice. <laughs> it is so cool that they have something similar to like this. It's like a TV oh, show. Yeah. The one for four. The one for four is is. I don't know if I'll be able to get through the one for four, but. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness the show is off the rails uh, as always but it, it's so fun and that's my initial thoughts i just love it and each episode gets a little bit wackier and twistier as it get, gets there we see more of homelander going crazy <laughs> as he usually is uh butcher and uh, butcher was brilliant in this as well as uh grace i love the story about grace and mm-hmm. the whole Operation Charlie, uh, at least we got a lot of good backstory in that, and uh, Mother's Milk, showing his anger towards, of all things, Soldier Boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of things in this episode I, I really did enjoy, and I, I just loved, uh, especially with Ashley, too. There are certain scenes yeah. there with her that I liked. Yeah. yeah, I so when we talked about two last week, I went in three and, three and four had already dropped, and I actually watched three and four back-to-back. Uh, last okay. week for the first time. And then I watched them both today because I wasn't sure how our recording schedule was going to work out. So I'm going to try to make sure I limit all my comments to, to episode three. But man, these two episodes, three and four were, in my opinion, perfectly matched to, to go yeah. together. Now four and five will be good to go together also because of all the, there's a bunch of cliffhangers at the end of four. Yeah. But these two for me, Three and four really it fulfilled a lot of the stuff that you and I talked about last week that we wanted to see. We were like, we want to see this, we want to see this, and yeah. we want this this person to appear. And we got all of that in this episode three, or most of that in this episode three. So it was really really cool. We got a lot of setups for in <laughs> in episode three. There's a whole lot of setups for episode four that I'll talk about. I may talk a little bit about. This week, but I'll definitely, when we get into four, talk about all the things we saw in this episode that were set up uh, by three. Wait. Awesome. Yeah. Wait, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, with that, we should just talk about our top highlights within the episode itself, I would think. Sure. If I'm going to take a more central role on the team, then I want to lose the mask. Silent inches score extremely high with boys under 10 years old. The mask lends a certain mystique. Well, fuck mystique. People don't even know it's me under this thing. I gotta wear it just to get a cap. Payback is the country's premier superhero team. The whole country. Sadly, a black member is still a non-star to blow the Mason Dixon. Well, I could be bigger than that. I could be Eddie Murphy. The best part I thought in the very beginning of the episode would be Huey having them break his arm because he wanted to <laughs> Victoria Newman not to suspect him and the way he wanted Kimiko to do it and even... You know, the <laughs> mother's milk is coming over. He goes, oh, no, it's got to be a clean break. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. and they do a countdown and she does it pop <laughs> yeah. and it breaks. And Jack Quaid pulled that off perfectly with his reaction. <laughs> and, and yeah, he does. 
yeah. it's cool that we get the boys. He's back with the boys. Butcher plays his little, uh, has his little speech and monologue and putting down on Huey and stuff of that nature. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was pretty cool. He's there and he's seeing it their way. He, he knows about, uh, Newman's, uh, work and what she's up to. Uh, they're in, of all things, the Flatiron Building in Manhattan as their offices, and I think that's pretty cool. That's a that's a classic building from anything. It's been around for years, so I thought that was pretty cool in that respect. But uh, that that's one of them I wanted to bring up. Very very cool. Um, my first one is is the the Homelander's meltdown from the previous episode having the opposite effect this season. As it had last, remember last season when he had his big meltdown, he had to go in, he had to apologize, and he had to be yes. all humble and everything. And this time he gets the exact opposite effect. And you have Ashley running into the room. He's stark naked on the couch. <laughs> And, and, you know, she, she's telling him that his numbers are up and then you see her kind of look down and he says, he says, that has nothing to do with you. Yep. That, yep. That's a good quote. <laughs> yeah. Like, that has nothing to do with you. And she's like, okay. She's just, she's just trying to not look at him. And, uh, it's just, it was hilarious. And then that they, that him and Starlight have a combined number that's higher than anybody else has ever had, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and then later, kind of it plays right into the same talking about the meltdown that he had when starlight tries to threaten him with that video and he just comes back and he doubles down on the scorched earth man he says okay fine go ahead and release it i don't care i'd rather i'd rather be loved but if people if i if people are going to fear me i'll let them fear me and i'll yeah, take literally- out new york i'll take out all the cell towers i'll i'll decimate the united states literally it's like either i'm loved which would be the greatest part, or mm-hmm. I'll be hated, which is almost equal. Right. So it's one extreme or the the next. Yeah. There's no in between. And this 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 whole episode in particular, and there's some in episode four as well. Anthony Starr is just chilling. Like I, oh, he is. I have never seen him in anything else that I that I can recall. But he is just chilling in the way he delivers some of these lines, and he's got that stare. You know, it's <laughs> it's really just just oh, just horrifying when he's doing that whole thing. So just it's, it was interesting that this season they kind of flipped that the whole uh, his meltdown thing. Yeah, they kind of flipped it on it. It's kind of like it's a foreshadowing of what they're going with with the actual show mm-hmm. and with his particular character. As villainous as he is as a soup, he's trying. It's kind of like what like crazed leaders out there and, and kind of rationalizing their efforts. And I think we're, we're we're leading into something where he'll probably take over or do something more extreme. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know if that's kind of pushing more into episode four. But that's what I'm getting out of it. Uh, it. It's more like him trying to take control over Vought and all over the soups itself. Yeah. And have you watched? Have you watched four yet? Because I want to make sure. Have you, have you watched four yet? I watched it. Like when it dropped. I just watched it once, but right. I didn't, okay. really wasn't paying attention too much. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. 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 I, I don't. I just wanted to find out because I'm. I'm really. I'm trying to to temper my stuff to my specific notes. For this one, but there's there's so much stuff in episode three that plays into episode four. You just brought up some of those things that are going to come to come to fruition, kind of in episode four. Yeah, know? very much like so. the ending dinner with uh, the deep mm-hmm. and all the other soups, and how it's and and how malicious he is mm-hmm. towards the deep because it's like him just getting back at him for all the crazy stuff that the deep was doing, even though deep was like. Or like humping his leg, just trying to get back into yeah. the the what you know the the crew itself back mm-hmm. into the you know to Vought Industries, and you know that one scene where he he does that to the deep. That one was something that was interesting in itself. How he, uh, he he's like, oh, he's back in the back in the what was it the what is it the six? I forget the eight. The se- the seven. No, it's the seven. Seven. It's seven. The, seven. seven. Yeah. I, the yeah. number is always off on me. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> but uh, the fact that they introduce him, he's back in. 
Jeep's wife's there. They just had sex in front of Timothy the octopus, mm-hmm. which which is kind of creepy because he was getting off more on Timothy watching. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, this was this was one of my point that the whole dinner, this whole dinner scene was one of mine as well because it's, it's like you said, it plays in both episodes because that's why probably why it's familiar to you because there's there's a scene in episode four that's very similar to this one. It's not okay. it's it's different, but it's it's similar to it, but. Again, Anthony Starr is just chilling in his in his way of of playing this character of Homelander and telling people what to do. And he, you know, he tells he tells he, he breaks the lobster and he puts it on on Deep's fa- uh, plate, but he doesn't make him eat the lobster. And you yeah. see Ashley like sucking down those clams or whatever she was sucking yeah. down. And Cassandra, the Deep's wife, is sitting over there. And when the the octopus is revealed, and it's not even a prepared octopus; it's live. It's yep. like the the chef has not done anything to this octopus. He's put it on a plate, and uh. <laughs> yeah, and he, he forces him to eat it. And he's and you can hear deep saying, you know, he, oh, he's praying. He has a family, and like Cassandra's yep. texting him, eat the effing octopus, yep. you know, and, <laughs> eat it, and uh, uh, just the whole that and it's, again and. and it's it's gross and that actor as well. Um, his name is Gaby Me. It starts with the C. Um, that plays the deep. He again. He play. You can see the anguish on him. And yeah. As, that, that, yeah. as those juices are just are just leaking out of his mouth and just how gross yep. is that that had to be to play. And I you know I, I I feel for some of these actors sometimes because depending on how how that scene played out, I don't know how many takes he had to. Do, to do that, uh, shoving that octopus in his mouth, you know, or the fake one, as it were. But oh, yeah. I'm sure, no, no, yeah, no, I'm sure it was fake. <laughs> but I mean, showing it and 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 portraying the act of chewing it, and, and uh, you know, uh, and then which, having the ink come out of his mouth too. Because mm-hmm. if you think, if you look at it, it looks like he inked in his mm-hmm. mouth as he was going in, and yeah, oh. Oh. yeah, uh, yeah but then, yeah, yeah, which leads into the conversation of like it was just before that that particular scene. But how Homelander actually compares himself to Martin Luther King oh. and saying that he is loved but also villainized. Mm-hmm. But, you know, he sees himself as this kind of leader to his own. And, you know, he goes, I'm free at last. Free right. at last. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just, just again, just chilling, chilling. Uh, another, let's talk about Starlight for a minute here. Yeah, and and kind of her and 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 uh, and Huey's interactions here because you know we have this moment where Anthony uh, where Homelander says uh, he's in love with her and she and when she gets outside she's on the phone to Huey and she's like I can't do it I can't stay here she's you know she's trying to tell Supersonic not to join the team and then yeah. I think it's the end of this episode he comes back to her and says no I'm not going to abandon you I'm I'm going to join the team you know. Um, but that, <laughs> that whole conversation between Huey and and Annie on the phone is great where he basically tells her we've got to stop being nice and we've got to do whatever it takes. And she's like, that's butcher talking. And he goes, well, his way is the only way we're going to be able to, to do get this. this. Done. Yeah. yeah. And, and so he, he tells her she's going to have to stay there. And she's like, well, how long? And he's like, I don't know. And she's like, you don't know how long it's going to be is just it, – it was heartbreaking at the same time. But Their relationship is really strained at this point because mm-hmm. of all this. She's stuck inside there with the seven dealing with this whole TV show. Her boyfriend that she had when she was younger – and Homelander dealing with the jealousy of all that, mm-hmm. as well as jealousy towards Huey. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe Homelander's got something for Starlight, for all we know, too. But maybe it's just his way of manipulation. Mm-hmm. You know, he just wants to utilize these people, and that's a way to get to her is to go towards. Uh, I'm forgetting the ex boyfriend's name, but he's on the TV show. Oh, supersonic, and yeah, supersonic. supersonic, yeah. And then you got Huey. That's Alex. That's I think his, his real name is Alex. They they've referred to him a couple times as Alex. So I think it's Homelander's way of manipulating the the situation, oh, so that way he could get her. And you know, it, it's such a, a sad thing. But it the their relationship is definitely strained from this. Mm-hmm. Huey's going one direction; she has to do her own. But she feels like she's like abandoned. And mm-hmm. to deal with this on her own, and she can't be part of what Huey is doing 
and of all things with and you know, him back with Butcher. Mm-hmm. And it, it's it's again where their relationship is strained again because we've seen this before in the previous seasons mm-hmm. with Butcher and him and her. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of redundant and it's it's going to be a consistent a issue, I think. It's a, yeah, but it's a different dynamic this time. So yes. it's, it's not really... So it's, Both it's, of them have the same focus of trying to get rid of Homelander in some mm-hmm. way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Um, let's see. Let's talk about Nicaragua for a minute. I was so oh, glad. Oh, yeah. We talked I wanted about this to see last that. <laughs> week. We said we wanted the flashback story, and I was so glad we got the flashback story in between uh, Mallory, you know, them cutting back and forth between the young and the old Mallory and yep. seeing, you know, a young Stan Edgar, and we find out that he's been trying to get the military uh, soups into the military even, even since that 30, 40 years ago. Yes. And, and so I, I, it was great to see Black Noir without the mask and that kind of – his kind of conversation with Stan Edgar about how, well, no, we don't want anybody to know you're black. We Correct. And uh, it, it, and that's going to play into what A-Train is dealing with in this episode as well. And that's a subplot mm-hmm. that's going to run uh, throughout. Um, uh, that whole fight scene was – it was both parts hilarious and both parts just tragic chilling. and yeah, chilling. Least, yeah. As we're seeing, you know, gunpowder just shooting that machine gun and killing as many of the good guys as the, I don't want to say good guys, as many of, of <laughs> our guys, uh, <laughs> our guys, as many as our guys, as the rebels and the Russians and as the, as the bad, the Russians. Yeah. So it's, it was, it was cool to get that. I, I loved, um, to see to see that now my second episode I did confirm Crimson Crimson Countess does when she comes out and and she says the reveal she says they killed Soldier Boy they used a gun or, a, or they used they killed well, hold, a I'm weapon the, they said yeah with some kind of gun or weapon and took his body yes and and so she saw enough to make her think Soldier Boy had been killed but. Uh, you know, we're still not sure, and um, so uh, th- again, these are all things that are going to play into the next the next episode as well. But I was so happy to see that and get to see Jensen Ackles actually playing the yeah. part, and, and you know, and, and all that was really really cool. With he's when he's got the when he's got the the bazooka, and she's like, "You're aiming that toward our ammo dump. You're going to kill half the camp." And he was like, "Fine." Yep. He just kind of drops it, you know, like he doesn't even care about the weapons. He's just you can just see. I, I can't wait to see more of this character and how he has de- how he if he's alive. I Spoiler yeah. alert. Sorry, Mark, you watched episode four. Yeah. Episode four has been out for two weeks now. The yeah. end of episode four. Spoiler to the listeners, yeah. too, Spoiler by the way. Spoiler to the listeners. <laughs> if you have not watched episode four, I don't know why you would be listening to this podcast if you haven't watched episode four yet because episode five has already dropped. But it's revealed that Soldier Boy is alive. Yes. So at the end of episode four. So well, well, talking about Soldier Boy, if you listen to Jensen Ackles as he's talking, does it sound to me he sounds like his voice is deeper? Probably, I know he did that. I I, I heard an interview once with him where he was talking about the character of of uh, of Dean Winchester and how when it was one of the things that uh, it was funny because all three of them, Jared Padalecki, um, Jensen Ackles, and um, Oh, the guy that played Castiel, his name is escaping me right now. Uh, but all three of them said they went into their auditions with like a specific type of voice. Like they dropped their voice a certain amount, an octave. Mm-hmm. They, 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 they went in with a deeper kind of voice. And, and in fact, uh, the guy that, uh, um, Misha, Misha Collins, who I was going to okay. <laughs> kick myself if I didn't remember. Misha Collins, who plays Castiel in that same interview with the, the, all three of the guys are talking about their voices. He says he went in and he, he went into the audition and played Castiel with this kind of raspy kind of voice. And he, he realized after the audition, he says, Oh my God, if I get picked up, I'm going to have to play that voice. Over and over again. <laughs> over and over again. So, so, so yeah. So, so just, but Jason Eccles does, has said in interviews that he does use a different voice for different characters. So he, okay. he can, he can manipulate his voice in a way to where it doesn't sound exactly like him. You know, it's well, pretty cool. So I, I, I think it's cool. You know, it, it's, we talked about voice actors before that it's, it's super cool when you have a voice actor who can do that and change his actor is, his kind of voice. Like um, people complained that rocket doesn't sound like Bradley Cooper. Yeah. And they're like, well, that's cause he's playing a part. He's, he's not playing himself. 
you know, he's he's changing his voice to play this part. But yet yeah. then you have an actor like Morgan Freeman who – that's such a distinctive voice. He's not going to change his voice no, to play no. a part. It, or James Earl Jones. James Earl it. Jones. Yeah. yeah. These these kind of guys that have very distinctive voices that they don't change him. Um, uh, we just talked about it with Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, Patrick Stewart. He yes. pretty much uses the same voice almost. I think different, different accents for different characters maybe. I believe so too. Yeah. yeah. But so, yeah, he probably does have a little bit of a different sounding voice uh, in this character. And I I just can't wait to see more of this character throughout the rest of the season. Yeah. I I think the character is going to be pretty cool to deal with. I also about the whole Nicaragua thing. Mm -hmm. You already talked about a lot of cool stuff that happened, but the whole one where we see noir and why he is the way he is, where he doesn't speak. Because we see Grace Mallory come up to him, and mm-hmm. it looks like he's got a gash on his head, his eyes all messed up, his side, the left side of his face is all screwed, mm-hmm. screwed up, and blood's coming out, and he's gurgling, gurgling, gurgling. Right now, I'm pretty sure that's the reason why. They just completely cover him up head to toe from all the wounds. And I think in previous in one of the previous seasons we got a glimpse of like the bottom part of his mask at one point so we knew he had kind of a jacked up face but yeah. I don't think we ever saw the whole thing. So so seeing the whole thing in this one we go, "Oh, that's why he wears yeah. the mask all the time." But yeah, um really, we get really the story, good. the history of it. Mm-hmm. Very much like the snake eyes from GI Joe, why his face is like always covered. Mm-hmm. And I I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I also love the fact that we get a whole backstory about the Reagan years and what was going on and the reason for that operation. It was basically to traffic cocaine into the United States to hit minority, uh, like, like, uh, areas where yeah. they were focusing in on black people mm-hmm. just to, get them hooked onto cocaine Mm -hmm. as some weird extremism. And it it was weird. They talked about Oliver North being part of this. Yeah. You know, Oliver North's operation was guns, was guns for the Contras. Yes. And, and uh, and money. And, but Mallory's operation was cocaine. And And it shows that she was stuck in the bad portion of government at that point, but she's changed her tune because her focus right now is towards Vought because of what happened with soups then. Exactly. Exactly. We get her backstory of why she is the way she is. You know, even Billy, Billy at one point confronts her and says, you knew there was a way to kill these soups all along and you didn't say anything. And, and she just admits that she didn't believe that there was a way to kill the soups, that she didn't believe yeah. that it actually had happened. So, and, yeah. and it's cool to bring up the different uh, characters. We already, you know, we know Crimson Countess, Noir, Gunpowder, Soldier Boy, Swato. Swato. <laughs> who who and there were two others that I'm, I'm uh, not TNT, the TNT twins or something like that. I don't. She called them like the TNT twins, but I don't think we ever actually saw them use their powers. So I don't no. know what their powers. The only time we saw them was when they were running away from or cowering in the yeah. back while uh, gunpowder is shooting. Yeah, right, right. So I'm yeah, I'm not sure who those those two were. Maybe we'll get more if we get more of a backstory on payback. But uh, yeah. Um, another one that I wanted to bring up, which is pretty cool, is uh, Butcher during that time when he was talking to Grace Mallory at her place. Of course, she talks about them coming in as like a circus into her place. Mm-hmm. Huey there with his cast, Kimiko, uh, Mother's Milk, and I don't know if Frenchie was there. I don't think Frenchie was no, there. No, Frenchie has a whole other subplot that I'll talk about. I've yeah, got, we'll, we'll go into about. that next. Mm-hmm. But uh, we got Butcher dealing with the V24 aftermath. Yes, the side effects. The side effects and him getting sick in the bathroom and Ryan actually picking up on it and knowing, mm-hmm. handing them the crackers, very similar to what his wife did. And Ryan and him have that little conversation. Uh, he, you know, Ryan just knew because of his powers, his heart rate was rising and there is something different about him. It's as yeah, if he, he could said his smell blood, it. His blood smelled funny. Or something yeah. like that. Some, something to that yeah. effect. Uh, yeah, his heart rate was uh, galloping and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. To me, that was a, a poignant part because later on, Butcher winds up really upsetting Ryan. Mm-hmm. And now their relationship is kind of turned. Mm-hmm. Because in the very beginning when they showed, it was like he, he, Ryan was all happy. Even Huey states, he goes, when did this happen? 
you know, yeah. and they had a, he was like close to the kid. And, but I think it had to deal with, do with how Butcher has been dealing with the V24, mm-hmm. his anger towards soups. And Ryan is just that con- constant reminder of why, because he already had the conversation with Mallory about, mm-hmm. you know, if he had that weapon, if they had that weapon, you know, his, he wouldn't Becky stop. would be back. Yeah, yeah, he wouldn't stop it. He wouldn't have stopped at Homelander. So. Yeah, yeah, really, really good. So so the other subplot that you started to bring up, and it actually does play into the next episode as well, is is Frenchie gets contacted by Cherie. We remember Cherie was one of his other eh, – there's a romantic thing. I think they had sex at one point or – Yeah. He's had sex with a lot of people. So um, – <laughs> but uh, uh, Cherie calls him and says that she needs to get out of the country because the mobster, the Russian mobster, little Nina – uh, she was running drugs for her, and Cherie tells tells Serge, tells Frenchie that she was robbed of the drugs, and Nina will later tell Serge, no, that Cherie just stole the drugs. It, it doesn't really matter at this point. The subplot is that, that basically this is getting our the boys in contact with this Russian mobster, because that's what you get at the very end of episode three when Butcher says, we'll call little Nina because we're going to Russia. You know, exactly so, because they want to get that information on that weapon. Yep, and we find out we find out some more about Frenchie about how uh, he used to do some bad stuff. I mean, she says he decapitated decapitated a guy with a van door because yep. the guy knocked his knife out of his hand. So yeah, whoosh. Yep, I, I wouldn't put it past Frenchie. Mm. <laughs> Uh, that's all I had as far as my highlights. But. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the only other couple of little things I have is, and again, these are all things that are going to play into the next episode four. And because I, the, of the way I watched them, I have them kind of fresh in my head, is um, Billy puking on Huey there at the end. <laughs> uh, and uh, then the whole home light thing where Homelander reveals that he and Starlight are. Uh, yes. They're a couple mm-hmm. and that, that's going to strain Huey and. Mm-hmm. And Annie's uh, relationship even more. Yeah. And of course, you know, Huey's going to wind up finding out the hard way. <laughs> yeah. As per, yeah. U- as per usual. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, just uh, that's that's really all I've got. The only other thing is we kind of briefly touched on it. And I don't know if two white middle aged men can really talk about this subplot very much. But a train oh, and his, and his yeah. brother and the social the social actions that uh, that a train's brother kind of wants him to take. And we're going to see him uh, try to make some manipulate of those kind that of, th- yeah. those kind of moves and stuff. Um, so it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this play, how these subplots play out through the rest of, of the season. But less, like I said, a lot of things that the whole Russia thing, uh, Alex staying on the team. Yeah. Supersonic. Yeah. That's, that's Alex. And, and then Huey getting puked on and realizing that butcher has taken the, the V. So all that stuff yeah. is going to play into the next episode. That it is. Uh, a few, a couple of notes that I had. Well, mm-hmm. I love the fact that with Ashley, she has an assistant and Named her Ashley. name is Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I just thought that was pretty cool. And, and the fact that, you know, Ashley, I've said it before, she, you know, Col- Colby Minifee is coming out more and more, her characters being more prominent. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, as the episodes come more and more, we're going to see more of her as being more of an important role mm-hmm. within it. And uh, I'm glad that she's getting a, a spotlight, at least within these shows, not as a main villainish kind of thing mm-hmm. like we saw from Fear of the Walking Dead. But I think that's pretty cool. And that's pretty much all I had. I okay. only had one quote. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, that would be Huey. And he goes in his conversation with Mother's Milk and he goes, and, you know, Mother's Milk goes, what happened? He what happened to you? It's like uh, your arm or hand because he cut himself yeah. trying to open up the jar. Yeah. He smashed it and he cut himself and he goes, Oh, you should see the other guy. The other guy is my penis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He says, are you jerking off with razor blades? <laughs> so yeah. uh, the only two I've got is, and you kind of alluded to it earlier was Billy kind of busting uh, Huey's balls when he says, I'm chuffed to have all the boys back under one roof. So I thought that was yep. a good uh, line. And then the only other one I got is when he's with, 
uh, with Ryan and he's about to say the C word and Ryan says, you were going to say vagina. <laughs> and, yeah. and he says, yeah, something like that. <laughs> very, so, very predictable for mm, Butcher and the kid already knows him yep, too well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought that was, that was pretty funny. So. All right. Well, I did not see any, uh, any feedback. So, not uh, yet. Not yet. So if you guys have that feedback, Put it in. Yeah. We will definitely bring it up. A uh, little bit of news. Obviously, uh, geez, Thor Love and Thunder is coming to us towards the end of the month, so I'm looking forward to that. Everybody's getting amped up for that with all uh, the final trailers that we're getting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm still uh, hoping for uh, <laughs> Beta Ray Bill to make a, his appearance into the MCU, but that's just me hopeful wishing. Other news, which is a little sad and strange, uh, Ezra Miller and all his antics have been catching up on social media. That's really strange. Uh, it looks like the, this Flash will be his last Flash. Whether or not they mm-hmm. replace him and they delay this movie any further, I do not know. But yeah, there's been I'm a lot curious. of curious. They're trying to figure out what to do that. Uh, the only news I've got is is in regards to another show that we cover, which is one that Daphne and I cover, and they have announced that Snowpiercer season four will be the last season of Snowpiercer. So when we get that, either late this year because it's in production now. So mm-hmm. it may come out later this year, maybe 2023 before we get it. I'm not sure, but uh, Daphne and I will definitely be uh, covering uh, Snowpiercer Season 4, the final season, right here on Panels to Pixels. Awesome. I look forward to that. Uh, and I, I think it's a nice way to bookend it, because mm-hmm. a lot of shows either go way too long, and then you kind of feel drained. But with that show, I think they need to bookend it. So that way you get a full story. Because obviously the movie came out and people reference and remember the movie. Because that was at a later event with on within or on Snowpiercer itself. So yeah. maybe they're going to try to tie it in. Or maybe that's an alternate reality. Um, yeah, No, that's an alternate. That's a totally alternate thing, I think, at this point. Because it's a, the, the storyline deviated com- has deviated completely. So Okay. So I, I I, if anything, it might... It, it might fulfill whatever was within the comic book for all we know, too. Yeah, I'm, like I said, Daphne and I both agree. It's it's always – I think – and I and Daphne agreed with me when I, when I told her this. I think it's always better when a show can kind of end on its own terms. Kind and of on a high, too, where yeah. it's at its highest point and people in viewership is there. People love the show. But it's kind of disappointing. But in the end, it's best that way rather mm-hmm. than it falling and failing and then – Ratings are terrible and people are resenting it after a mm-hmm. while, you know. All right. Well, uh, we we spoke about feedback, so let's go into explain to people how they could send in their feedback. Sure. Uh, obviously, you're listening to us on your podcast player of choice, whatever that may be. If you can give us a review on there, we would love for you to give that to us. We are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, all the regular players out there uh, you can get us on. If you can give us a review, that would be great. Uh, We'll give you a shout out here on the podcast for it. We'd love to hear it. Awesome. Check out our website, panels to pixels podcast.com currently under construction, but it will be up and then we'll have all the feeds and everything else there and information for you to get in touch with us. And we are on Facebook at facebook.com slash panels to pixels. You can find us there, interact with us. We put up a post. Uh, we try to get a post up every week of what's coming up that week. Mark did them this week, I think. Um, I'll try to get on uh, getting some posts up next week for the next ones that are coming. Uh, we are also on Twitter, and that would be at panels to pixels, and that's panels and the number two pixels. You can email us at panels2pixels1 at gmail.com. That's panels2pixels1. The T-O is spelled out right there in the middle and the number one at gmail.com. We are also on YouTube. You can find us on YouTube if you just search panels to pixels podcast. So don't just put panels to pixels. You'll find Josh and his friends as they cover a variety of stuff. But you want panels to pixels podcast? Uh, subscribe and please give us a thumbs up. The Kevin Smith interview is up there as well as on our Facebook page. So you could just view that and see me and Kevin and all our glory, as it were. Very cool. <laughs> and, and have fun with that. Yep. We are on Instagram at Panels 2 Pixels Podcast. That's Panels 2 Pixels Podcast, all spelled out in letters. 
Awesome. And check out all the other podcasts on the Next Level Podcast Network. We highly recommend them all. Wilhelm is out there with Ben Beck as he continues his interview process with uh, a lot of celebrities that are out there, as well as uh, the regular format of his podcast as well, which would be uh, top five of a variety of different topics. So check that out. The Melting Pat, Podcast Zero, and so much more. All you have to do is go to nextlevelradioonline.com and check them all out there. Coming up next, we will have our coverage of Ms. Marvel, Episode 2, Crushed. And then we will be pressing on with our reviews of The Boys. Uh, The Umbrella Academy is dropping next week, and we'll start covering those at some point as well. It's going to be a – we're going to be racking up the podcasts here, Mark. I think we're going to be very busy. (laughs) But uh, as Steve and I were actually talking earlier, what we might do is do half and half. With certain podcasts, we might get two a week where you'll have half the boys and Miss Marvel all in one, and then maybe the Umbrella Academy and whatever else we're covering at the same time. So we might do that, so that way it's a lot. So if you're not interested in it, I'm going to look into chapters, so that way you could skip a chapter, so that way you could go to the next particular topic that you're interested in following, as we're doing. Because not everybody's watching the boys, or they're not watching Miss Marvel, or they don't want to be spoiled at that, too. Very cool. So we'll try that. But uh, where else can listeners hear us, Steve? Well, I send voicemails to various podcasts that our friends do, so you can hear my voice pop up on, on those. Uh, Strange Indeed, I'm pretty regular uh, contributor to them with their feedback and uh, the Walking Dead cast when it's out. I usually try to get something to them, and I'm trying to get something to the what WTF is from on Podcastica Network as well, because they're doing a rewatch of the first season of From. Oh, that's true. Well, you could also hear me on my other podcast, which would be Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, and that can be found on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network. Uh, there we cover fantasy, adventure, action adventure, thriller, suspense films. Uh, the last one that we covered, which should be dropping during the week as well when this episode is up, would be Top Gun Maverick. I will have the other Apes episode up as well. So within the same week, you'll you'll have those. I will be recording a podcast soon with uh, our friend Lizzie, and she and I are going to be covering Contact. Mm. That has Jodie Foster, Matthew McConaughey. It's an early 90s film, so I thought that was pretty cool. Lizzie wanted to do it. I just want to thank all of you for listening, and so that's our show. I am Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is Panels to Pixels Podcast, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night.